Hello everybody, this, doc this is Dr. Maria Malkatri from United Arab Emirates and it's my pleasure to, uh, to be here with you today to moderate this interesting session about inflammatory bowel disease. And it's my pleasure today to introduce the first speaker uh, he, who is uh, uh, Professor Ogata. He's a professor and director center of diagnostic and therapeutic endoscopy, Koyo University School of Medicine who will talk about the role of endoscopy uh, capsule um, uh, uh, in diagnosis uh, and uh, uh, staging the inflammatory bowel disease uh, uh, patient. Can you welcome with me, Dr. Ogata? Okay, so should I start right now? Okay. So I can start and start to share my slides. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start that. <clears throat> So hello everyone. I'm Ogata from Keio University, Tokyo. And I thank you for inviting me again to the Tokyo Live this year. And uh, it is my pleasure to have a chance to talk. Uh, today I will talk about the current situation and the future aspect of the colon capsule endoscopy. Uh, this is my disclosure. So I'd like to introduce you the uh, uh, difference between a small bowel capsule and the colon capsule um, <clears throat> from uh, provided by a Covidian company. So colon capsule, a little bit um, larger and longer than the small bowel capsule, equipped with a, a dual lens so that uh, it provides almost 360 degrees visual field. And uh, like a standard colonoscopy, colon capsule endoscopy needs several amounts of preparations to examine. And the most important functional features of a colon capsule is an adaptive frame rate, uh, which ranges from four to 35 frames per second, automatically depending on the speed of capsule movement. Here, I'll show you the image of the capsule. So, a small bowel capsule recoils with fixed rate of two frames per second, as you know. However, the second generation of current capsule has two different recoil modes, which consists of four frames per second when capsule moves slowly, and 35 frames per second when it moves fast. Usually, capsule locates in proximal columns such as uh, transverse or descending column to prevent missing the polyp detection. So, I will introduce uh, the usefulness of colon capsule against colonic polyp cancer surveillance and the evaluation of disease activity of ulcerative colitis. As you know, uh, not only in Japan, but also in the Western countries, the number of colon cancer is increasing. Yeah, especially in Japan, um, it is a critical problem that the number of colorectal cancer death has jumped up to number one currently. In the United States, in a couple of years ago, um, task force releases updated recommendations for colorectal cancer screening. Colon capsule has been regarded as a third tier uh, um, <clears throat> test and its examination of every five years are recommended. So here I show you uh, the beautiful colon capsule uh, image uh, with the colon rectal body or cancer findings by colon capsule the second generation. This is a capsule moving in the terminal realm and passing through the ear cecal bulb. And this is here you show you the ear cecal bulb in the cecum. Then capsule moves up to the uh, ascending column and the transverse column. You can see the uh, triangle shape of the uh, ascending and the transverse column. 
And as soon after, uh, you can take a look and there's uh, colon cancer in the upper part of the ascending column. And then uh, the capsule cap uh, passing through that region and then moves uh, the next uh, transverse colon left side. And then you can also take a look at the small polyps. Uh, you can see that soon. Here you can see that. And then the capsule moves uh, to the descending column and the sigmoid and rectum. Uh, the capsule moves to the descending column. You can take a look in the small polyps in the descending column here. And then it uh, moves to the sigmoid column. You can uh, see that for the uh, much more uh, uh, bigger polyps or other cancer in the left sigmoid column. Then finally, it reads the uh, rectum. And you can see the uh, um, hemorrhoid in the another verge like this. Okay. So more than 10 years ago, many uh, articles have been mainly reported about sensitivity of more than uh, six millimeter, millimeter polyp detection uh, but in cone caps. Those were 39 to 79% uh, with the first generation of a uh, current capsule and increased to uh, 84 to 91 percent with the second generation of a uh, capsule equipped with the adaptive frame rate. For example, recent reports show that Dr. Saito evaluated the polyp detection by current capsule and the per patient sensitivity was 94 percent and uh, per polyp sensitivity was 86%. Uh, thus, they concluded that the colon capsule had a high sensitivity for detecting significant colon lesions. Another report of two years ago demonstrated that the uh, colon capsule detected 78% of the superficial colorectal regions and the false negative regions existed 31% of right-sided colon and 50% of uh, SSAPs. So that they insist that, for example, flat type SSV have a risk of demonstrating colon capsule false negative results. They mentioned about that. Another feature of colon capsule is that uh, the cleansing level is critical which means poor preparations reduces polyp detection significantly like that. And these are the highest quality images by Chrome capsule with the sufficient preparations, uh, which is on the day and the day before examination, total of more than five liter rigid prep was recommended so that you can imagine taking those amount of prep uh, seems not so easy even for a physically large sized man in the Western countries. Thus recently our colleague Dr. Omiya modified power prep using castor oil for coron capsule examination. Castor oil is made from castor bean uh, and it is used as a laxatives in India since BC 2000. It is very, very old laxative. And by adding 30 milliliter of castor oil during prep, the capsule excretion rate will raise up to 97 percent. And average food intake was successfully reduced to 1.8 liter. So that by using this preparation protocol, um, <clears throat> the acceptability of corn capsule exam uh, expected to be increased. Currently, uh, we assess the positioning of corn capsule in current tumor screening is shown in this right. Problem is that among half million of F4BT positive patients, only 55% of patients received colonoscopy in Japan. 
So 12,000 patients are diagnosed with colon cancer. That means approximately 10,000 patients might miss the chance to be diagnosed with colon cancer. So we propose that to those who are hesitated to receive colonoscopy because of of pain or some embarrassing feeling, especially in female, strongly recommend to receive colon capsule endoscope. So if they do, uh, it would contribute to the reduced risk of mortality by colon cancer, I suppose. The next I talk about ulcerative colitis. The incidence of UC has been amazingly increased in Japan like this. And they are uh, um, surprisingly the total Japanese UC patients country, the total number is thought to be second in the world followed by a USA. As you know, three to target consensus concept has been proposed and the uh, uh, endoscopic evaluation of disease activity has a crucial role to make decision of therapeutic goal as Mayo score zero or one. However, in a daily clinical practice to perform annual or even every other year colonoscopic examination is difficult because of many reasons such as technically difficult case or risk of prey up after colonoscopy. And one day uh, we performed small bowel capsule against UC patient for some reasons and found that colonic disease activity might be evaluated by capsule endoscope even under poor preparations like this. Thus, we conducted the pilot study of feasibility, evaluating the severity of mucosal inflammation in UC by colon capsule with standard volume of preparation for colonoscopy. The results show that the cleansing effectiveness was not so fantastic which is for the more than 50% of the patient has not so uh, uh, have a, a good preparation such as poor or fair. Uh, however, the correlation maps endoscopic score between the standard colonoscopy and capsule colonoscopy seems to be sufficient so far. Furthermore, the observation from dual lens clearly show that for the definition of extent of disease could be possible, which was very impressive. This is the image of the uh, current capsule on the upper uh, front side and the back side. And the uh, uh, left image shows non-affected and right side is affected mucosa. You can see that in a different uh, a mucosa in one capsule. So this patient is diagnosed with left-sided colitis. However, total colon observation rate, which is capsule extraction rate, was not so excellent, which meant the findings of distal colon sometimes could not be evaluated, especially in the distal colon or rectum. This, this pilot study uh, showed that colon capsule is supposed to be applicable to UC, but modification of valve preparation are necessary for total colon observation. So in the next study, we modified the bowel prep as shown in this slide. Namely, we added some booster and prokinetics during preparations. The results show that for the both of total current observation and the uh, uh, bowel cleansing levels were improved, uh, but not yet sufficient. So <clears throat> uh, we further modified PrEP using small amount of cassa oil. Then we found that uh, capsule excretion rate was increased to more than 95% currently. 
so that currently we use this PrEP protocol for Crohn capsule against UC patients. Furthermore, to know the efficacy of Crohn capsule against UC, we established novel scoring system to assess the severity of UC named as CSUC. It was modified from UCEIS score reported by a Professor Simon Travis. For example, um, this is a Crohn capsule findings of a 27 year old male UC patient and showed uh, the UC, CSUC score showed two points in the vascular pattern, one point in the breathing, and the two points in the uh, erosions and the ulcers, and total is to be five points. You can see that, and they are right now uh, using this score validation study is now ongoing. So basically a computer-aided diagnosis system by AI uh, is thought to be very, very useful and suitable for reading capsule images. For example, this is a computer orient, uh, company oriented product of 100 positive findings from the patient pointed out by AI system. And furthermore, many other software will be developed and is established for supporting doctors' uh, capsule reading. The future aspects of Crohn capsule may be uh, something like that, which has therapeutic functions. Okay, so uh, this is the last slide. My, I appreciate my uh, Dr. Matsuda and Saito uh, from uh, National Cancer Center regarding Crohn tumor screening, and uh, Dr. Professor Omiya from Fujita Medical College uh, provided raw prep data. And my colleague, Professor Hosoe, regarding UC variation for kindly providing their data. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ogata, for this elegant uh, and uh, well explained presentation. And it's my pleasure now. I think we will keep discussion at the end of the second talk. And it's now my pleasure to uh, invite uh, Professor Takoyo Matosumoto. Um, who is the Professor Division of Gastroenterology Department of Medicine, School of Medicine, Await Medicine uh, Medical University, who will talk about endoscopic diagnosis of neoplastic and neoplasm uh, lesion uh, in UC patient. Kindly, Doctor. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Ina Uwe, and Professor Alcatri, and Professor Bishops for giving me this chance of my presentation. And I would like to make a brief talk entitled Endoscopic Diagnosis of Neoplastic Lesions Occurring in Ulcerative Colitis. And this slide summarizes my uh, COA disclosures. And in 1980s, famous and excellent uh, English investigators such as Blacks, Professor Blackstone or Professor Riddle uh, established that patients with ulcerative colitis are at the high risk for the development of colorectal cancer. And in that area, the words grade of dysplasia, surveillance colonoscopy, dysplasia associated lesion and mass, random biopsy versus target biopsy, and total colectomy have become a major and significant words for the discussion of dysplastic lesions in ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. But later during the subsequent 40 years, the nomenclature or terminology for neoplastic lesions in UC has drastically changed from adenocarcinoma with or without dysplasia uh, down to flat or non polypal dysplasia or invisible dysplasia, or there are some uh, peculiar words such as adenoma associated lesion or mass, but more recently, the word, uh, the nomenclature, ulcerative colitis associated neoplasia, abbreviated as you can, has become the standard nomenclature. But in particular in Japan, there is still firm obsession as to the distinction of sporadic dysplasia or sporadic neoplasia 
from you can by way of pathology or colonoscopy. And I think this is a very serious problem for the discussion of dysplastic lesion between Westerns and Easterns. And uh, in 19, uh, in, I'm sorry, in 2014, there was an international recommendation meeting referred to as scenic recommendation meeting. This meeting was aimed to uh, uh, standardize the terminology or standardize the practical procedure for the surveillance colonoscopy for patients with inflammatory bowel disease, especially for those with ulcerative colitis. And this group was consisted of more than 25 colonoscopists or pathologists. And there was also a subgroup of the uh, a uh, subgroup of the, uh, the investigators referred to as the terminology committee. And this terminology committee established the terminology for reporting findings on colonoscopic surveillance for patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And as you can clearly see in this slide, the reporting system is almost similar to the Japanese macroscopic classification of colorectal cancer or uh, international Pari classification reported in 1990s. But what is different from those two classifications is the specification or a clear uh, description of the border of the uh, neoplastic lesions, either as being uh, distinct or indistinct. But unfortunately, the terminology uh, group failed to indicate how to uh, evaluate the border, either by a chromendoscopy, either by image enhancing and endoscopy, it is still obscure. And this slide summarizes examples of scenic terminology. And you can, as you can see in the uh, left side of the slide, there is a visible dysplasia with polypoid lesion with this thin, distinct border. But please see in the right side of this slide, there is a visible dysplasia with non polypoid superficially elevated uh, configuration. But how do you think about the border? Is it distinct or indistinct? Most colonoscopists may feel that this is distinct, but I don't think so. I think it is indistinct. But in any event, during the scenic recommendation, there are two recommendations which had more than 85% agreement. One is when performing surveillance with standard definition colonoscopy, chromendoscopy is recommended rather than white light colonoscopy. This is the one. And the other is when performing surveillance with high definition colonoscopy, chromendoscopy is suggested rather than white light colonoscopy. These two recommendations have been accepted based on analysis, based on a meta-analysis of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clinical trials. And during that meeting, we discussed about the inferiority or superiority of target and random biopsies, but we failed to reach to a, a consensus. But later in 2016, Professor Watanabe from uh, Tokyo University and their Japanese colleagues compared target and random biopsies for surveillance of uh, ulcerative colitis. And as a consequence, both target biopsy and random biopsy had equal detection rate of neoplastic lesions. Based on this result, it has been suggested that target biopsy may be the first choice as the surveillance colonoscopy for patients with ulcerative colitis. Thereafter, there have been uh, some, uh, there have been uh, various types of uh, controlled trials investigating the uh, procedure for colonoscopy. This slide sum summarizes an, a meta analysis comparing dichroma endoscopy with white light colonoscopy for the detection of dysplastic lesions. And as you can see in this slide, they are marginal, but a, uh, but a significantly superior effect of uh, diachromo endoscopy when compared to white light colonoscopy. But please be sure that the uh, uh, contribution is very marginal as to the diachromo endoscopy. 
This is another meta-analysis comparing the diagnostic value of dichroma endoscopy and virtual colonoscopy. And this slide in includes a clinical trials performed by Professor Bishops. And when you see this result, there are not any significant difference in the detection of these plastic lesions between dichroma endoscopy and NBI uh, endoscopy. And overall, and as of overall, there is also again marginal difference in the superiority of dichroma endoscopy when compared to uh, every virtual chroma endoscopy. And based on these results, I believe that at present there is not any significant difference in the detection of dysplastic lesions among white light colonoscopy, dichroma endoscopy, and virtual or image enhancing colonoscopy. And I would like to introduce, introduce two uh, consensus meetings regarding the characterization of dysplastic lesions by way of colonoscopy. This is a Frankfurt classification 2016 published in 19, uh, 2019. In this uh, consensus meeting, we compared endoscopic findings between dysplastic lesions and non-dysplastic lesions in detail. And the items included as the endoscopic finding were morphology, endoscopic inflammatory activity within or outside the area, the demarcation of the lesion, color, and surface architecture, and vessel architecture. And this slide show a, shows a, an example of the uh, Frankfurt 2016, class, uh, 2016 classification. This is a depressed 2C type lesion with no alterations within and surrounding area and a full and sharp demarcation and same intensity with irregular surface and irregular vessel. What do you think about it? And in any event, uh, we, con we reached a decision that endoscopic signs diagnostic of dysplasia were flat configuration, irregular vessel, regular surface, no ulcer within. But unfortunately, the inter-observer uh, inter agreement in the interpretation of endoscopic uh, finding is not so good. It was uh, uh, poor to fair, but in any event, these findings strongly suggested that the flat lesion with regular surface and irregular vessel without ulceration may be suggestive of this plastic lesion, while this needs to be validated in a prospective study. And I would like to introduce another Japanese uh, consensus meeting referred to as Navigator 2 study. This study group was consisted, uh, this study group consisted, consisted of uh, more than 15 colonoscopists and uh, three pathologists who were familiar with IBD. And during the consensus meeting, we discussed firmly as to what that what endoscopic sign is the most diagnostic of these plastic lesions. And as a consequence, we reached a consensus that uh, image enhancing endoscopic findings specific to UC associated neoplastic lesion are irregular ripple appearance or irregular wave-like appearance and small oval or round scattering pits and papillary appearance on the surface of the protruding lesion. And based on these findings, we established the strategy for detection and characterization of neoplastic lesion during surveillance colonoscopy. First, we have to pay attention to configuration, color, surface, and then we see border and surface pattern of each lesion. And based on these findings, we classified the lesion into UC associated neoplastic lesion, uh, sporadic neoplastic lesion, sericile lesion, or non-dysplastic lesion. 
And probably you may feel this is a very complex uh, scheme. And we accept those criticisms and we are striving hard to simplify this algorithm now. This will be published near, near in the future. And there is also another institutional effort to characterize the dysplastic lesions in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. This study was done by uh, uh, Professor Shin E. Kudo et al. at the Showa University. And Professor Kudo et al. tried to, com uh, tried to combine the PIT pattern diagnosis and, and the cytoscopic diagnosis for the detection of dysplastic lesions in ulcerative colitis. And as you can see in the slide, the combination of endocytoscopy with PIT pattern uh, increased the sensitivity and specificity when compared to PIT pattern alone for the, detect, uh, for the diagnosis of these plastic lesions. This finding needs further validation. And finally, we would like, I would like to talk about the uh, provisional endoscopic resection for dysplastic lesions in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. This is a lesion which I previously, uh, which I showed in previous in a previous slide, and at that time I said that this lesion may not have this thick border. So we observed this lesion very precisely and found that actually this lesion had a uh, distinct margin, but the lesion was much more wider and larger than we expected. But because this lesion had distinct border, we tried to remove this lesion by way of endoscopic submucosal dissection. And fortunately, we could remove this lesion and block. However, there have been sparse information as to the uh, feasibility and safety of the endoscopic resection of con colonic dysplasia in inflammatory bowel disease. This slide summarizes a meta-analysis uh, which has been recently published in GRE. In this meta-analysis, the authors calculated the rate of pooled risk of CRC in patients who once had, who once had endoscopic, endoscopic mucosal resection or ESD the pooled risk of CRC was calculated to be two out of 1,000 patient years. And this two out of 1,000 patient years was much more lower than the previously reported instance rate of CRC in IBD with low grade dysplasia, which was calculated to be 14 out of 1,000 patient years. And this finding may partly support the notion that endoscopic resection may be appropriate for patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And this is the final uh, slide of my presentation. The overview of comparative studies for the detection of UC-associated UC neoplastic lesion have shown that there are minimal differences in the detection rate among various uh, image enhancing endoscopies or white light colonoscopy. An establishment of a certain consensus and its validation are needed for endoscopic characterization of UCAN. And finally, prospective cohort studies are needed for the application of endoscopic resection of UC associated neoplasia. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for this excellent presentation. I think it's a little bit complex. This, uh... Um, uh, classification U C A N um, uh, classification yes. yeah. very complex <laughs> very complex <laughs> anyway uh, we will discuss it more and it's my pleasure now also uh, to introduce Professor uh, Pichubus uh, who's uh, the head of department uh, gastroenterology and University Hospital uh, Leuven Hospital who will join the panelists for the final discussion for this uh, interesting session. Thank you for your introduction, uh, uh, Dr. Alcarti. Thank you so much. Uh, the first question I would like to ask uh, Professor Ogata regard, uh, regard the castor oil. I don't know how frequent you are using that for um, a patient who's going for endo uh, capsule. Yeah, um, 
Actually, uh, that like that, it was very, very traditional, old, old one. And the, uh, uh, um, as I told you before, that for that old, uh, uh, like that, it is used from ancient area. And the, uh, uh, that's uh, like that, it is, it, it's uh, basically uh, useful in, in streets in Japan. And the, uh, uh, but it's uh, very, very uh, not tasty. And the, uh, it's not for a common use in a dairy cooker. Uh, daily life, but uh, uh, but especially for the uh, reducing the uh, uh, amount of preparation, uh, it works finally, and we found that it is works. So uh, uh, it does not taste so good, but uh, it it's very very little amount of volume. It's just fifteen to thirty milliliter drinking with uh, uh, water. It's not so tough for the patient. So. Just for the so you, you mix it with the so you mm -hmm. mix it with polyethylene with the clean yeah. prep you mix it with it. Uh, actually, that take just once in a, in a, like that uh, castle itself, but it does not taste so good and uh, it does not good feeling in the in the mouth. So you can take it a drink or something after that. That's all. We are now using routinely that preparation now for colon caps endoscopy. Okay. So, so actually I also had a question regarding that Professor Gata. First of all, let me congratulate you both on a very nice and excellent presentation. It was really nice to listen to this and very nice overview of what's happening in both fields of uh, colon capsule and uh, especially also for IBD or colitis associated neoplasia. It was really excellent. So I want to start with uh, Professor Ogata. Uh, actually adding on to what uh, uh, Dr. Alcretri already said about the, the, the taste and how you'd use it. It's about the tolerance of the patients and how likely are they to use it again if they have to do it or are there any patients refusing it because you that is maybe the biggest challenge one of the advantages of doing a colon capsule is that you don't need a colonoscopy mm -hmm. but if you ask patients who undergo a colonoscopy afterwards very often they say the bowel prep was the worst part of the investigation so how does this relate to the colon capsule and the willingness of patients to undergo it maybe a second time Oh yeah, uh, that's a good question. But uh, basically, for the to hesitating, they received the colonoscopy in Japan in the uh, maybe a little bit special situation compared with another Western countries because they uh, uh, we cannot use for the deep sedation against the colonoscope. Uh, uh, for example, for the mainly and a propofol is used against the standard colonoscopy in the dairy clinical practice in the Western countries. And we can use that, but the, uh, the low restriction is uh, about that for the, to use that pre, uh, uh, sedation, the anesthesiologist must be in the, next to that patient. But for the total amount of anesthesiologist in Japan is very, very low and the, uh, we can, not perform that uh, the uh, without uh, anesthesiologist. Otherwise, we cannot use that medicine. So uh, without propofol, just doing a colonoscopy is the, uh, not so uh, uh, um, easy if the uh, colonoscop special colonoscopist. But basically, the many many good uh, colonoscopists is. Uh, exist in Japan, but the total amount of the doctor's not, number is not so sufficient. So that's why many rumor is a, a broad, broadly, uh, 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 many patients say that all oh, colonoscopy is very tough. So uh, mm -hmm. that's the main reason why the product, uh, many people does not like to receive colonoscopy. So uh, that's the problem. Yeah. So the, against of that, the, the patient who do not want to receive a colonoscopy, regardless of the FOBD positive, uh, we recommend to use a, a corona, uh, uh, capsule colonoscopy with the, uh, some standard uh, colonoscopy preparations. Okay. No, that makes sense. Obviously, that's a, it's a very good uh, point you raised there, and and the reach out to the patients is probably better than with standard colonoscopy if you take all those exactly. points into consideration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, I have a question for um, uh, Professor Matsumoto. 
um, about uh, the image enhancing. Um, I know in Japan, sometimes they are using water as well to enhance the legion, to see it um, in uh, um, proper way. Uh, so um, you are relying on that or only on dye and um, uh, your this um, complexity classification you see N A or A N. Mm. That complex algorithm is based on a magnifying colonoscopy with NBI or other image enhancing system. So uh, that's why the system is so complicated and the findings is so detailed. So uh, we believe that the system should be more abbreviated in a more in a sh short, short, sure. shorter, simple way to distinguish this plastic and non this plastic lesion. But we are searching for the appropriate distinction now. So please wait for a while. Excellent. And regarding the endoscopic resection, uh, frankly, I face uh, during my um, clinical uh, um, experience that most of patients you see who is having anal involvement, most probably they are ended by total colectomy and by stoma. Since uh, this uh, legion also, most of surgeons, they are saying it's close to anal sphincter. Mm -hmm. And most of the patient, uh, young patient, and they are telling them about the risk of uh, losing uh, the, contra the um, incontinence in, the, in, in mm -hmm. this sphincter region. And they prefer and refer them for total uh, colectomy. I don't know if you have that uh, same idea in your practice or you prefer still uh, to do uh, endoscopic research, um, resection rather than referring a patient to surgeon. That's dependent on, on the case. But so far as the colonoscopist can determine that the lesion can be resected by endoscopy, we first cho choose the endoscopy resection first, regardless of the age or uh, sex or something like that. And at present, we do not have any clear indication which lesion should be uh, uh, processed to endoscopic lesions. So we are collecting retrospective data now in order to know the natural history of the resected lesions or uh, remaining color. That's why uh, that is a very uh, informant, important information and we are gathering data now. Okay. okay. Section regarding UC, I have a question for both uh, uh, speakers. Uh, uh, coming back to, to, to the colon capsule, uh, Professor Agata, you mentioned that uh, uh, the colon capsule actually uh, has an increased risk of false negatives for flat lesions, if I understand that correctly, especially for sessile serrated lesions. So uh, how do you feel that this refers to its possible applicability of the colon capsule for screening uh, or for surveillance of longstanding colitis? Would there be any role of the, or does this actually preclude the use of the colon capsule for that purpose? I think a yeah, basically standpoint, um... For the uh, uh, surveillance against the colitis associated dysplasia or cancer, we do not recommend to use a colon capsule because, uh, for the, as uh, Dr. Matsumoto has suggested, that for the, even in the standard colonoscopy with the uh, uh, high magnification or high, uh, uh, um, uh, another chrome endoscopy, even, though, even if using that device, it's going to be tough. To discriminate uh, for the for the uh, to early detection of the uh, dysplastic region in colon colitis, but in the, in the capsule and the colon capsule endoscope, we cannot stop the image, or you cannot enlarge the image by colon capsule, of course. So, uh, uh, as far as for surveillance, uh, coronoscopy for the detection of the early phase in in a dysplastic region of cancer against UC, uh, using current capsule is not recommended, of course. Okay, that's a clear answer. Do you concur with that, uh, Professor Matsumoto? Mm -hmm. I agree. Do you, do you agree Do you agree with that? Uh, I, I, I partly agree with the comments by Dr. Uh, Professor Ogata, but, but usually patients at higher risk of CLC have protruding lesions within the colon. So uh, if we can use capsule as the screening procedure, and if we see 
protruding lesions, predominant protruding lesions under capsoscopy, capsendoscopy, the patient may, may be a candidate for detailed surveillance colonoscopy. That's the way, uh, one way to use the capsule as the screening uh, procedure. Okay, basically to, to identify the, the low risk colon yes. spanner. Yes, okay, yeah, that's a good point. So uh, actually, um, thank you also for sharing again the scenic recommendations and uh -huh. congratulations on that uh, really landmark uh, work that was done that really put the resectability of these lesions on the spot. Um, as you mentioned, and I think most people who are into this field felt it as kind of a uh, disillusion that the random biopsies were not abandoned and was not agreed upon to, to abandon mm -hmm. those in the scenic guidelines. Do you think if you would redo it now with the evidence that's there, you would be able to convince uh, all the participants that random biopsies are not necessary anymore, especially after the new data that you showed? Mm, there is another data which, uh, which support the significance of uh, random biopsy more recently. So uh, I believe that the quality of colonoscopy may be a candidate high quality of colonoscopy is a candidate to abandon the uh, random biopsy. If we can see detail, uh, uh, detail on the colonoscopy, then the target biopsy may be sufficient. Probably the uh, participants for Japanese uh, perspective study were all measuring in IBD and also uh, colonos uh, col colorectal cancer colonoscopy. So uh, that's why the target was uh, sufficient when compared to target biopsy. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, random biopsy. So there is a uh, there's a need to check the expertise in the colonoscopy to uh, select either random or target biopsy. So we, with ESG, we have proposed a training schedule for that. Mm -hmm. And we uh, uh, suggested to have like, uh, to, to visit somebody like you with a lot of experience in that mm -hmm. for at least a week to see some cases. And then in the first 20 cases to have backup random biopsies when mm -hmm. they start doing chromodoscopy. Uh, do you think that makes sense or, or not? Yeah, that's very, I think that makes very sense. First of all, we have experienced how the dysplastic lesions looks like. That's hmm. very important. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, I have a question also regarding surveillance uh, for both of you. So if the patient having a history of endoscopic resection for um, uh, dysplastic lesion before, uh, you will go for endo uh, capsule for the patient if the patient is not keen to do colonoscopy, or you will insist that the patient must go for um, uh, colonoscopy as a part from surveillance, especially he has history before. So, Professor Ogata, would you, would you put it? What is your answer? Okay, uh, for the, for the after, you, you say that for the after rejection, endoscopic rejection for the surveillance. Uh, yeah, the patient to is the, casual. Yeah, are we using for the cor endo coron capsule or not? You mean? Yes. Yeah, I think it, it, it's going to be possible as far as for the protruded region, as a, Dr. Matsumoto said that. Main uh, uh, majority of that dysplastic region, the protruded region. So, it's such a kind of region, a coron capsule can be detected. But uh, as far as for the flat region, it's going to be very tough to uh, detect. So, to do that uh, and the, uh, for check the precise uh, observation, uh, coronoscopy, standard coronoscopy, if be necessary. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about the same legion or what you show us, Professor. Professor, uh, the flat legion, it's around the anal sphincter. So uh, after removal, you discover that the patient had adenocarcinoma. And the next step for the patient surveillance, he will go for colonoscopy. Of course, con detailed colonoscopy is Perfect. the only way to prevent another lesion. Excellent. So. If I may, uh, uh, Dr. Kartri, I just I have a final question um, regarding also the, the the approach and the management of lesions and ulcerative colitis. Uh, it's really challenging and interesting to see how you're developing this new classification, and the complexity of it illustrates how difficult, in fact, it is. Right. So we get confronted with lesions that mimic perfectly a sporadic adenoma, and you can resect that on the spot. 
But if you look at all the studies you mentioned, most of the lesions that are targeted, uh, if or most of the studies that use targeted uh, biopsies show that there's only a 20% neoplasia detection rate per lesion when you do biopsy. So that illustrates how difficult it is, especially because some of these lesions exhibit neoplastic changes that we see in normal uh, colonic mm -hmm. polyps. So, uh, so in terms of... Uh, deciding what you're going to do with, with, with a lesion. Uh, do you think that the new classification that you are developing will be able to help us to determine on the spot? Uh, is the current sensitivity high enough and specificity uh, also high enough to avoid too many resections of lesions that are harmless and not to miss others? Or will we still depend on, the, depend on that pre-EMR or pre-ESD biopsy? That's a bit of a glance at the future. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, we don't have any data regarding the specificity or sensitivity. So we are, we are, try, are trying to make a prospective sensitivity. But the algorithm is not the one to, uh, in, to uh, is the one to increase the sensitivity of these plastic lesions. So uh, that classification may include false positive lesion, maybe. We do not, even though we do not have practical data. Yeah. Okay. So for the time being, because you you probably know if you if you survey these patients in the rectum, you sometimes have these large patches of mm -hmm. what I call regenerative pit pattern, which is actually type three L if you look at it closely, but it's just regenerative tissue, and we should mm -hmm. not, yes, yes. not we should not resect that on the spot and just mm -hmm. uh, biopsy it to be sure. Of course, of course. Yeah. It's very interesting work and to see also the development of the CSUC scoring, uh, Professor Ogata, that is, uh, I think, a very nice uh, way to standardize the scoring uh, with the colon capsule that uh, I think in, uh, really enholds a, a nice future. Uh, so what, what is the inter-observer agreement on that for the time being? Can you can you allude on that? Uh, if you show the images, is the inter-observer agreement good for the CSUC scoring? Yes, uh, right now it's an uh, ongoing and the inter uh, uh, observer uh, verification is right now uh, performed, almost performed, and the uh, for the uh, the agreement is almost fixed and uh, it's suitable. So uh, uh, in a, in a, maybe at the end of this year uh, we can uh, make a, a proper step for the uh, the report to you all of you. Looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Professor Ogata, Professor uh, Matsumoto, and uh, Professor Pichops for uh, this interactive uh, session. And uh, always Japanese people, they are in advanced uh, imaging better than us and running the lead for um, uh, classification in uh, new plasma and legion, either colonic or GI, uh, any part of the body. Thank you all, and um, I hope that everyone enjoyed this session as much as we enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.